Hi guys, welcome back to Eduvet channel. Today we are discussing a very important basis of large ruminants and also wild ruminants and also small ruminants. This is actually a very important basis in the field also as well as in the entrance examinations also. So we will be moving directly. Introductory part, hemorrhagic septicemia. Guys, there will be many uh, spelling mistakes with the hemorrhage and the septicemia because different people use different spellings for hemorrhage and septicemia. So pardon me for the spellings. Hemorrhagic septicemia is a bacterial disease that mainly affects the cattle and water buffaloes. They are the main agents. So young animals also get affected and one outbreak in 2015 killed more than half of the Saiga population in Kazakhstan. Like that wild animals also get affected. And if at all, proper treatment is not given at the time, the death is for sure. So moving to the etiological agent, for more details of the etiological agent, you can see my video on the bacteria pasteurelas. I will give the link in the description box. The disease is caused by certain serotypes of pasteurelas maltosida. They actually the common cells in the nasopharynx of the animal and also reproductive tract. The Asian serotype B2 is mainly causing in the Asian areas and also African serotype E2 in the African areas. So disease occurs mainly in cattle and buffaloes but also has been reported in goats, African buffalo, donkeys and wild elephants. Serotypes B1, B3, B4 have caused septicemic disease in antelopes and elks. Serotype B4 was associated with the disease in the bison. So this is a chart giving pasteurella maltosida type A, type B, type B infections. They are actually causing type B this type B in cattle, water buffalo, bison, yak, others are causing episodic hemorrhagic septicemia. That is the nasopharynx of the carrier animals. B2 is the main strain, I think. Yeah, B2 is the main strain. Also, type A cause poultry, foul cholera, primary infection, also type B in poultry cause foul flora, cholera. So, this is the classification. Uh, you can see more on classification and all in the pasteurella video. So, resistance. Pasteurella maltosida is susceptible to mild heat. That is, Treating uh, the sample for 55 degrees Celsius will kill the pasteurella bacteria. And it is most susceptible to all hospital disinfectants, that is phenols, that is dettols, etc. And whenever the monsoon rains come in the Southeast Asia, the organisms survive for hours and this creates a more role in the epidemiological role of pasteurellosis, that is HS. They are also killed by 0.5% phenol in 15 minutes, that is actually the disinfectant used in hospitals and all. So moving to the epidemiology, in main Asian countries, hemorrhagic septicemia outbreak occurs in the monsoon, high humidity, high temperature region. Susceptible host cattle and water buffalo is the main susceptible host. This is actually a picture of a young animal having hemorrhagic septicemia as near, see the near the area of the neck, particular area and the shoulder region is having completely hemorrhages. Zoonotic potential, there are no published reports of infection of Pasteurella maltosida serotype B2 or E2, that is the causative agent of HS in bovines, they will not produce any illness in human beings. But many pasteurella bacteria is opportunity in humans and they cause many nasal infections, many other infections. So you can see my video on pasteurella for more zoonotic photos and all. So transmission actually through the direct contact with infected animals or on fomites. And the worst epidemic transfer occurs during the poor physical condition. That is, whenever stress occurs or whenever transportation of cattle occurs, this disease can transmit. That way, it is known as shipping fever. The majority of the infections are mostly endogenous. That is, uh, the commons, they will be acting as a common cell in the nasal tract or the nasal pharyngeal region. And whenever the animal is sick or in the poor ill general condition, the bacteria may proliferate and produce more copies and produce septicemia. Septicemia results from the penetration of pharyngeal mucous membrane by highly pathogenic strains. The presence of toxins or virulence factors of any bacteria in blood is known as septicemia. It can be also lead to bacteremia or due to viremia or due to any protozoa. They resist phagocytosis and elaborate toxins. The phagocytosis resistance is actually due to the toxins present in them. So the pathogenesis Causative bacteria from the nasopharynx will then reach the ventral bronchi. They will be producing many lung lesions. 
uh, lung lesions may lead to bronchiolitis, alveolar infection, alveolar proliferation, fibrous tissues, fibrous exudate will be present, nasal mucosa will be highly damaged, capillaries will be congested, pulmonary veins will be having thrombosis and intravascular thrombosis will be present. Almost the lungs will be completely fibrotized and many lesions in the lung will be appearing. So incubation period is actually three to five days and it also uh, sometimes some animals can become asymptomatic that is they will not be having any symptoms but they will be acting as a good carrier and they will be eliminating the virus in a high or the bacteria sorry the bacteria will be in a high shedding clinical signs as usual high fever depression reductions to move salivation painful respiratory distress actually due to the lesions emerging in the lungs so these are nasal exudates and froth coming out of the mouth so you can see Submandibular edema and all. This is the picture which I was given in the first slide. See, this is completely small, small hemorrhages in the lymph node, leading to generalized reddish appearance of the neck and trunk head region. Postmortem lesions will be edematous swelling of the throat and brisket. It will be containing straw colored serous fluid. Actually, due to hemorrhage, many thrombosis happenings in the inside of the vessels. This may break and RBC may ooze out along with the serous fluid or the straw colored fluid. So, this produces a reddish or edematous swelling appearance of the throat and biscuit region or the neck region. Blood tinged fluid in the body cavity due to hemorrhage and breakings of the mucosal membranes. Pharyngeal and cervical lymph nodes will be swollen and congested due to the high amount of bacteria present over there. Subserosal petechial hemorrhages, generalized congestion in the lung, fibronecrotic lesions in the lung. Calves may be hemorrhagic gastroenteritis. In calves, they will produce at the villi. They will be acting at the villi and they will be producing gastroenteritis. Gross lesions will be minimal in animals that have died quickly. So, it will not, the bacteria will not have much sufficient time to produce much lesions in early death. So, widespread hemorrhage and edema, hyperemia consists of severe sepsis that is actually due to the toxins and the bacteria. Swelling of the head, neck and brisket occurs in nearly all cases. Pneumonia and gastroenteritis occurs, but usually it's not extensive in small animals. So there are no microscopic features that are specific for hemorrhagic septicemia. That is, uh, we can see only the bacteria or the congestion in the lungs. Severe, severe swelling of the head, neck, brisket only occurs near all cases. So this is the fibronecrotic trachitis. That is, you can see fibrosis, fibro tissues are coming in the vessels and the trachitis. This is trachea. See. Fibrosed fibrosis patches, lung fibrosis. These are the fibrotic tissues. These small, small fibrosis happening. Initial stages of small fibrosis. Fibrotic tissues are proliferating inside the vessels and small, small vessels. See, this is the gross appearance of the lung. After this, is we have taken this picture from a cattle which has died from hemorrhagic septicemia. See the bloody tinged lung. This is a lung actually. This is a top view. And see bloody hemorrhages, bloody spots, hemorrhagic spots, fibrosis. These all are the lungs. See hemorrhages many point of blood. This is blood tinged hemorrhage. Fibrosis happening. Chartered, Chartered fibrosis. So this is completely fibrosed. See, many many vessels were fibrous due to proliferation of fibrous tissue. Fibronecrotic pleuronevonitis. That means mm, pleural fluid will be having bacteria and they will be producing many lesions in the nearby cells. Microscopic lesions mainly we will having bipolar staining when culturing is done or the bronchial gases. Differential diagnosis is done with the backlit, rinderpest and anthrax. Points that is mortality is nearly 100 percentage unless the animal is treated very early disease. An antibiotic treatment is effective uh, that pyrexia uh, started very early. That is during the pyrexia stage we have to start the treatment or else we can we cannot protect. And soon after this hemorrhagic septicemia, the animals are more susceptible for FMD. That is, FMD virus can easily gain entry into the cattle's body which has already got infection with hemorrhagic septicemia. Diagnosis actually through the culturing method or by the symptoms and lesions or leachman stain from the heart, blood, liver, spleen, etc. And also animal inoculation test is done. That is mainly for culturing we have to test for the 
normal appearance of pasture lamal toes that is tender coconut smell and all yeah prevention and control is prevent overcrowding of animals proper hygiene measures ring vaccination should be practiced in case of this hemorrhagic septicemia also and we have to disinfect the premises uh, the euthanasia of the infected animals or exposed animals the proper quarantine proper uh, treatment proper management protocol should be practiced vaccination is inactivated vaccines also their uh, maternal antibodies are mainly with adjuvanated formally treated bacteria vaccination now live attenuated vaccine that is live hs vaccine prepared using an avirulent pastrosula maltosula b34 strain now in india mainly practicing reksha ovac reksha biovac reksha triovac practices that is they will be having biovac means divac it is actually through reksha hs hemorrhagic septicemia and reksha hs bq that is black water so these are the biovac biovac also produced from fmd hs biovac is also there then triovac means fmd hs black water this will be fmd inactivated antigens at pasteurella also clostridium antigens will be there the time and this is the annual dose first dose then the second dose so these are the vaccination schedules you will be familiar with the vaccination starts the extra hs indian immunological is preparing this is the vaccine type this is the vial this is the annual vaccine study thank you for more videos on pasteurella you can see my pasteurella